Hello everyone, this is João here. I'm here to present my PhD defense. It was one year ago, so so, in May the 1st, March the 1st, sorry, in 2019. I was advised by professors Rodrigo Weber dos Santos from uh, the, uh, my university, Universidade Federal de Rio de Fora, and Professor Rafael Alves Bonfim de Queiroz, also from Universidade Federal de Rio de Fora, and Professor Marcos Bea, he's from he, he's a professor at the Physikalische Technische Bundesanstalt in, in it's the National Metrology Institute of Germany in Berlin, where I stayed for eight months during an exchange. This is the title of my thesis: Modeling of Cardiac Perfusion in Contrast Enhanced MRI Exams. So this talk is divided in the, in the following topics, the introduction, and then I'm going to present the mathematical models, the numerical methods, then the numerical simulations and results, and then I, I'm going to present the discussions and some conclusions. First of all, it's important to mention what is myocardial perfusion. So before the heart pumps the blood to all over the body, it needs to have its necessities of blood and oxygen supplied. And it happens through the myocardial perfusion. So what is the myocardial perfusion? You have the, the coronaries in the epicardium, the outer boundary of the heart. And these coronaries bifurcates and branches in smaller vessels. And these this smaller vessels get smaller and smaller and culminates in the capillaries, which is the smallest vessel. And the... the Myocardial perfusion is the exchange of oxygen and nutrients going from the intravascular media, capillaries, for example, and these oxygen and nutrients going from the capillaries to the uh, to the tissue. So the tissue will be healthy enough to pump the blood all over the body. And here, for example, we have some a video explaining, showing some oxygen and nutrients going from the intravascular, from the capillaries to the tissue. Then. As I said, the tissue will have the, the, the needed demand of oxygen and nutrients. And there are some problems when you have, for example, for instance, if you have a clot, uh, a blood clot in, an, in a coronary artery, then this blockage in the artery will cause, will imply that the blood with oxygen and nutrients will not reach some regions of the heart. And this is what we call an ischemia. It's a lack of oxygen and nutrients. So the tissue will be suffering due to a lack of oxygen and nutrients. And if it happens for a long period, this ischemia can lead to a, a, an infarction, for example, which is a more severe case, which is the death of the cells. This will imply in, in several problems, as we know. So the infarction will lead to uh, a death of the cells and this death of the cells could be sometimes is called as fibrosis and you, you have no more cells living cells at the region and if you have for example here we have three images no fibrosis on the first mild, mild fibrosis on the second and severe fibrosis and as I'm going to show here this is going to be important for the model that, that, I'm, that I'm going to present so basically there are some exams in order to evaluate myocardial perfusion. One of them, both of them are widely used and the first is the computer tomography, the CT, and the second is the magnetic resonance imaging, the MRI. And they both, both of them uses a contrast and the second one is widely used. There, it has different protocols, I'm going to present more about it in the next slides. But basically, what is the MRI, the magnetic resonance imaging? Here we have a short axis slide of the heart. We, we can see the heart pumping. And this is basically a cine, cine uh, MRI. No contrast at the moment. I'm going to talk more, more about the contrast in the next slides. This ring here is the, the, the left ventricle of the heart. Right? And this in, inside here is the cavity and the myocardium is this, this ring, the cardiac muscle is this ring. So there are different protocols in order to evaluate myocardial perfusion. And these two protocols, these two MRI pro protocols, the first pass, when the patient has a problem, an ischemia for example, the regions 
with the ischemia gets dark, there gets a, a dark color in the images generated by the MRI. On the other hand, the late enhancement, which takes 10 minutes, the first pass is one minute, the late enhancement 10 minutes. If the patient has just an ischemia, the late enhancement will have, will indicate nothing basically. All the regions will have the same color, dark color, because after 10 minutes, the contrast agent will already be washed out from the myocardium. On the other hand, if the patient has an infarction, the first pass will capture the same thing as in ischemia, a dark region. On the other hand, the late enhancement will indicate a bright region on the infarcted area because the contrast agent will attach, will be attached to the infarction, to the fibrosis, as I mentioned in the previous slides. And uh, this is the difference, basically, between these two protocols and both of them are used as complementary exams in order to understand if the patient has just an ischemia or if, if the patient has an infarction. So here we can, we can see two images showing this difference. The first pass, so here is an ischemia, and the late enhancement, which indicates here an infarction. So as I said, the, the first pass takes, here it's, I, I, I wrote it wrongly, it's 50 seconds, not 10 seconds, and the late enhancement, something like 10 minutes, and we have this difference. An interesting thing is, is in a, uh, it's an hypothesis that the doctor, the physicians took, which is an, stat an static geometry, no motion, to, in order to evaluate the myocardial perfusion. But the physicians take the same, Im the, the MRI generates several images in the same stage of, the, of each cardiac cycle. So you have some, if you take these images, you have some static, so no motion which is important for our model, as I'm going to show in the next slides. The physician has a tedious process to evaluate the perfusion. I mean, he takes uh, the images and, you know, he kind of, okay, I think there's a problem in this region because it's more dark and so-so. And what we are trying to do here and an effort is, has been doing in this, in this sense is to provide uh, some uh, more quantitative data and not so much qualitative data. Not that uh, qualitative analysis is important because of course it's important, but we want to provide some quantitative analysis. A computation model that provides some good information in, in terms of the problem. If there is or not a problem in that region, so the clinician will <coughs> already have due to the computational model Good information, you know, the computational model will provide, okay, there is a problem here. So he, knowing this information provided by the model, he already can take different uh, actions, you know, sending the patient to the catheter or something else. And some models and some devices have been developed in order to evaluate this, and to, to provide more tools for the clinics. The motivation of my work is to quantify the perfusion and to correlate it with stenosis and perfusion. And a functional problem such as the perfusion and uh, anatomical uh, feature as such as stenosis. You know, the stenosis is the blockage of the, the artery. So to correlate a certain problem, the stenosis, with what this stenosis will imply in the perfusion. This is the motivation, and basically the, th the, the thesis is uh, to provide a mathematical model of cardiac perfusion that can contribute to the quantification of data obtained by the contrast enhanced MRI. As, as specific goals, we have to simulate the first pass and late enhancement perf MRI perfusion. In the short axis, we are using here a representation of the short axis of the myocardium and to associate it uh, the anatomy and function using uh, mathematical models. And we evaluate this, these models in three different scenarios, a healthy, ischemia, and infarction. I'm going to show two models, the continuum model and the coupled model. The first, the continuum model, we have the arterial domain 
and we have an influx in the epicardium in the, what would be the coronary arteries then we have the arterial domain the blood with the contrast agent goes to the capillary domain in the capillary domain we have communication to the extravascular domain and the, uh, the exchange of oxygen and nutrients this this is the phase where the, ox the exchange of oxygen and nutrients from the capillary to the extravascular happens and then we have this in, the, in both directions and then to the capillary it goes to the venous domain and then you have the outflux to the lungs to be filtrated and etc which would be a recirculation and a part of the contrast is eliminated by the kidneys for example in, in this recirculation then again you have a second pass you have a first pass of the contrast engine and then you have a second pass a part of it is eliminated and then you have a third pass and that's why as I'm going to show here uh, we have first pass and second pass and third pass so of the of the CA uh, the CA dynamics has this characteristic and the, the, con the, the quantities of interest in that we have here are the CA concentration, I mean the contrast agent concentration, and the intravascular pressure. This is a more complicated case, and we kind of collapsed the intravascular domain as one, the, the arterial, the capillary, and the venous domain as one, what, which we called intravascular, and this is uh, an overview and scheme of the domain where I'm going to apply our partial differential equations. So we have an influx the intravascular in the intravascular domain, the exchange of oxygen and nutrients, I mean the exchange of contrast agent the CA from the intra to the extravascular. And we have outflux from intravascular both from both intravascular and extravascular domain. We have a recirculation from what is going out of the intravascular. And we have in this B figure here, when we have the scenario of infarction, we also have a communication between the extravascular and the fibrosis and the infarction domain because of the fibrosis that we are going to simulate in this figure B. Okay, so the continuum model, some hypothesis that we have, we have a static geometry. The variables of our problem are pressure and CA concentration. The fluid is considered as incompressible, we have the recirculation coupling, advection and diffusion in the intravascular, diffusion in the extravascular. Also, it's important that we consider the gradient of pressure in the extravascular is much smaller than the gradient of pressure in the intravascular. <coughs> so we are just to, to calling PI, the pressure in the extravascular SP. And we are using the Darcy law for fluid in porous media. It's important to mention what is porous media. Basically, we have fluid phase and solid phase, which in our case will be intravascular and extravascular domain. And this porous media has a permeability. So this here show what would be a porous media. Basically, we have several uh, solid fulfilled with several empty spaces connected between each other and the heart the, the flow of the blood in the heart has a behavior like this one, a dynamics like this one. So this motivates us to, to simulate the blood flow as a porous media. What is porous? This total volume, the intervascular vo volume by divi divided by the total volume. And also it's important to mention that we have uh, the tissue, the interstitial space we have this lambda, which will indicate the fraction of the extravascular space related to the interstitial space. It's important because the contrast, uh, the contrast in the infarction scenario gets attached to the interstitial space. This, uh, the second image is histological slice of the myocardium. We have here the interstitium, and this tube here is a capillar. So the Darcy system here shows the divergence of K multiplied by the gradient of P. K is the permeability tensor, P is the pressure equals zero in the domain. V is the velocity is given by the minus K times the gradient of P. So this is the Darcy system, which gives us the profile of pressure and velocity. 
And also we have these boundary conditions, a prescribed boundary, initially boundary conditions because we are prescribing specific pressures in these two boundaries, the, the epicardium and the endocardium, the outer boundary condition and the inner boundary condition. And K is, the, is, a, is a tensor of permeability. And also knowing, once that we know the profiles of pressure and velocity, we use this velocity in this first equation, which is action diffusion reaction equation modeling the dynamics of the contrast in the intravascular domain. So we have here diffection, this term is the diffusion, and this F term is related to the exchange of CA from the intravascular to the extravascular. So you see in the second equation, which is the equation for the extravascular space, we have, we have here this F, which indicates the contrast going from the intravascular. Here we have plus F, and here we have minus F, we have this this exchange, this term is the, is the term of exchange. And here, as I said, we have phi on the first equation and one minus phi in the second equation, which is the fraction of intravascular and extravascular. And also in the second equation, we multiplied it here by the lambda, which is the fraction of the extravascular related to the interstitium or to the tissue. And we also have here, this G term is important, which is when we are simulating uh, an infarction, we have an exchange of, of, of CA from the extravascular to the tissue. So we have this third equation, which is the infarction equation. So G is the contrast engine going from the, intra the extravascular to the tissue. We have plus G and minus G here. And this is the, the fraction of that region which has infarction. And this term G is a term of sorption, what we call sorption in engineering, and indicates and use it to indicate to simulate the attachment of the CA in the fibrosis in the infarcted area. And here we have boundary conditions, prescribed boundary conditions in the extravascular and in the extravascular. And the important thing, we use it, uh, Hoban boundary condition, we have a prescribed flux, a divective and diffusive flux in the epicardium, the outer boundary condition, because of the rate of CA entering into the system. And use it by this Gaussian here. This, the, the Q is the quantity of contrast entering in the myocardium by this flux here, this Hoban boundary condition here, the Q multiplied by, by the velocity, this is because of units we have to, to multiply the Q by the velocity, so we have flux, and it, this Q is given by this equation. The, this X term here is important, I'm going to, to talk more about that next, because it's related to the recirculation. As I said, we have the recirculation, and what we do is a simple model that is a 1D simple model for the recirculation, we basically have the amount of, let me show the previous one, the amount of contrast leaving the, the intravascular domain. We sum up this and it, we put this as uh, the left boundary condition in a 1D simple domain. We put the, the contrast here as a boundary condition. We observe the recirculation and what we have in the end of this 1D domain, we add as this X term in the recirculation in this boundary condition in the previous slide, this boundary condition here, this X term, is basically this, what I am just said, that we have in the end of the recirculation. And in the middle of this re recirculation domain, we have elimination by the kidneys, which is this term here. We use it as uh, a PDA, also a uh, advection diffusion reaction equation to simulate this recirculation. And a part of it which is eliminated by the kidneys is given by this term here. This was the continuum model, and now we have the coupled model, which, which is basically we are changing, we are replacing the intravascular domain by a discrete, which is, was a continuum so far, and by a discrete one. We use the, an arterial tree provided by the CCO method, constraint the constructive optimization, and instead of a continuous domain, the intravascular, we use it this, the, the arterial tree, which is a discrete model. So basically, this discrete model constructs arterial trees, and in terms of radius of the segments, 
the angles of the statistics ramifications and the profiles of pressure and blood flow. Basically, this is interesting because it captures the morphometric features of the arterial tree. This method captures the minimization of dysfunctional in terms of the length of the, the, the segments and the radius. And the perfusion domain is the short axis. Binary ramifications of rigid cylindrical tubes that have several cylindrical tubes connecting each other. And lamina flow and steady state and lamina flow. This is hypothesis of the CCO. It's important. And the blood is assumed as Newtonian fluid, incompressible and homogeneous. And basically we have an influx in the first segment and then this flux divides in two and then the two and two again and then in more two and so on. We have several bifurcations, each one respecting the pressure at the beginning and, and the pressure in the terminal segments. Something very interesting that also respects the the, bar, the power law here, this power law, and provides us some some more reliable domain to simulate the perfusion, the the flow, the blood flow in the arteries. And we have a coupling between this discrete model and the continuum. The the discrete that I just showed is the intravascular domain, and we have a coupling with the extravascular domain, which is a continuous one. We have velocity given by this equation. And the CA dynamics in the intravascular is given by this advection diffusion equation. And this F term here, which is uh, the, ex the, the term of ex exchange in the terminal segments from the intravascular to the tissue, which is given by this linear equa equation here. And this is a scheme showing this exchange from the terminal segments to the tissue to the extravascular domain and we have a flow due to this term here, this F term here. And the equation of the extravascular is the same that I showed in the continuous model. So th now regarding the numerical methods, we have the finite volume methods to evaluate the, all the equations which represents and evaluate all the PDEs in the discrete formulation. And we are going to evaluate the flux. This, mo this method evaluates the flux from the each finite volume method which we divided all our domain. And we have also this model considered the mass conservation. We kind of divided uh, uh, these dots here, are dots of the domain. So we have volumes and the flux from each volume in the phase. We have to evaluate the flux in each model in, this, in the face of each finite volume. Also, we use it for the pressure equation, the Darcy model. We use the Jacobi method, the CA equation. We use the explicit Doyle method. So we have to use the CFL condition for stability. We use the advection diffusion. This, this stability condition is for advection in diffusion with the diffusion equation in the extravascular. This is for the both models, the continuous model and then the coupled model. The advective term, we have to consider an upwind scheme, which we use a simple one, a first order upwind scheme. Okay, so, so those are the numerical methods for the, for the continuous model. We use a CFL condition, of course, because we are using explicit toilet methods for the CA equation, the contour state equation, and the pressure equation, we use the Jacobi method. And we use also the upwind scheme for the active term advective term. Now for the coupled model, we kind of use, it's important to mention that we use this structure of communication between each model. We have a graph structure. So using this graph structure, structure, we have the communication between each volume and we know when the volume is uh, a regular one or if it's a bifurcation of it or if it is a terminal uh, node, so we can play with this without losing any inf any information. We kind of know to where the contrast is going to in a bifurcation, if it's a regular or if it's a terminal. In, in the coupled model for the extravascular and the fibrosis and the in, in the infarction domain, we have the same as in the continuous model, but for the intravascular, we have to use uh, a structure like this one 
to capture the the tree the the properly tree and for a regular node we have specific equation because it has communication between two other uh, nodes but for the bifurcation we have to consider a different equation we have to to adapt the equation for for this kind of node because of the flux you have different flux going from for example here the phase a and the phase b so we have to take care of this to to consider the mass conservation not to lose anything and also if it's a regular node we have these equations due to the uh, boundary condition that we have here so for the numerical simulation we have three different scenarios as I said in the, in the beginning health ischemia and infarction so for the continuous model we have these three three scenarios here the healthy ischemia and infarction the healthy we have two kilopascals and zero kilopascals respectively in the outer boundary the epicardium and the endocardium in order to evaluate any stenosis of 30 percent we kind of reduce the the pressure gradient in this region here in the endocardium and the epicardium we have a linear decay from the the top and the bottom to the extreme right here we have a decay of pressure in order to simulate this smaller pressure gradient caused by the stenosis in the in this region and then in order to simulate a more severe case we uh, have more drastic pressure gradient here the pressure in this extreme right here this is smaller and then we have less pressure gradient and less blood flow in this the right portion of the myocardium those are the parameters that are used you can pause the video and, and examine all of them Mo uh, we took most of them from the literature some of them are fitting we use we fitted the parameters in order to to adjust these curves these two graphs that we took from the, the literature the first one is related to the first pass so we have here 50 seconds and the second one is the late enhancement which is 10 minutes these are those are data that we have from the literature in order to evaluate the difference between the ca in a healthy region which is the blue, blue curve here sorry an ischemic curve here the blue curve and uh, the black curve here is the healthy region second graph the dotted line is the healthy one and the black the, the continuous line is the skin the, the infected so we have basically uh, to divide our domain in two regions we need to choose two regions one of them is related to the to the diseased area second one is the, related to the healthy area we have these two regions we choose this one these two regions here one is a remote a healthy one let's say and the, the other one is a diseased one and we evaluate the signal intensity of the contrast agent in these two regions which is what these two graphs here shows the signal intensity of the contrast agent which in our case we are considering the amount the concentration of the contrast agent and the signal intensity of the contrast agent as linear it's not it's an adaptation it's not really linear but it's it's a way of doing this and some people also do that some papers pu published in the past few years so the first pass the, the dotted line are the from the literature and the continuous line are related to our model so we can see that we captured this one pretty well and this this is for the first pass and the second graph here and this is slide is the late enhancement so we can see that our model also captured pretty well the dynamics of the contrast agent now the pressure results we can see here a healthy one ischemic and infarction we can observe the difference of the pressure gradient in the right portion of in the right region of the myocardium because of the pressure equation of course we, this was what we expected but for uh, the ca dynamics we can see here a healthy one this is the late enhancement so it takes this is related 10 minutes of simulation so here that we can see that there is nothing basically because, because it's healthy so this one is the ischemic and this one is the infarction so you can see the ca is attaching to the region fibrosis and in summary we have this one the first pass is healthy the first figure 
the second figure is an ischemia, we can see a problem here, and the third one is an infarction. We can see that these two ischemia and infarction are similar, as expected, but, and this is the first pass. So we don't know yet, you know, if you do, if the, the clinician does, does just the first pass, he cannot notice any difference between ischemia and infarction. And, it, you know, it's, it's tedious and, and subjective, it's, it's arbitrary, it's complicated. It, then he uses the late enhancement, which in our case we can see here. The healthy and the ischemia doesn't show any difference, but the infarction, you know, the, the CA is attached to the fibrosis. So this, our model captured. And now the coupled model, we kind of divided the, all the myocardium in, two, in three regions. We have three different coronaries and these parameters that we have, that we applied in the, the coupled model. And here, this one is, is a graph related to the blood flow. This one related to the radius of the trees. And this one shows the pressure. We kind of applied here in the subtree in this region uh, a flow that we, we, we would have in the first scenario, a normal flow. In here, we divided this, this scenario, the, the flow in the subtree by 25. And, and in stenosis, we divided the flow in this subtree by 30 in order to simulate a more severe case. So the first is a healthy, the second is the ischemia, and the third is the infarction. So the healthy one, we can see, and th again, this is 10 minutes of simulation. It's not continuous because we took some images in this 10 minutes of simulation. The second one is ischemia, so we can see a radio. Let me show it again. We can see a difference here. Observe this region again, once again, because it's very important, this part. Look at the, the, the right here. There is a problem. And the third one, the infarction, we can see CA being attached to the region because of the infarction. So this is the summary of what we have. Once again, it's the same that I showed previously in the continuous domain, continuous model. This is the coupled model. So the first pass for healthy, nothing. The first pass for ischemia, the first pass for infarction. So we can see there's a, there's a similarity between ischemia and infarction in the first pass exam. But if, if we apply the late enhancement exam, we can see the difference when it's uh, ischemia or when it's an infarction. So some discussions and conclusion, conclusions. By the end, uh, we showed here, we varied some parameters in order to, to understand uh, the sensitivity of these parameters so in order to, to justify why we are using the third domain to simulate the fibrosis. And this basically all of, all of these graphs shows why we need a third graph, a third domain for fibrosis and not just two domains. We, cannot, we try to simulate varying all the parameters that we have, we try to simulate this, the fibrosis and it was not possible. So we kind of add this third domain. This is to justify why we're adding more parameters in our model in, in terms of the third domain. It's because we, we couldn't simulate the stenosis, the fibrosis using just two domains. We kind of reproduced qualitative, the proposed scenarios, uh, reproduced clinical data for ischemia. We use it the, the sortion for the infarction, which is the third domain that, that I just mentioned. Uh, we have stenosis and perfusion. We correlate stenosis and perfusion in both models, continuum and coupled. And the continuum and the coupled model have uh, some differences in terms of the number of elements. So we have different difference in, in the simulate the time of the simulations, and it's something that we uh, want to work in the, the next the future works because took a lot of time to simulate the coupled model in relation with the continuum model. And the limitations we, ha we have, uh, the relation between the contrast agent concentration and the signal intensity, which is, as I said, it's not linear, but we want to, to evaluate it in a better way, consider this non-linearity relation we use it a two-dimensional flow. 
we know that it happens in, in three dimensions, but we, we need to work that in, in future works also. It's a limitation. The coupling with the venous system, which we also not consider, it just collapsed all the intravascular. I mean, the third, the, the three part, we consider just the, the arterial, capillary, and venous domain as one. We collapsed the, the, the three as one. The flow back from the extravascular to the intravascular, we also didn't consider this. And the microcirculation, which is something very difficult, very difficult to, to capture because of the difference of sizes of the, the arteries, the big arteries and the capillaries, for example. For future works, we want to add some parallelistic effects some to evaluate it in a patient specific, to apply it in patient specific cases to, in order to evaluate it, to validate it also. And the numerical uh, limitations that we have, we use the elliptic equation, the Jacobi method, and we, have, we know that we have, for example, multi-grid or uh, conjugated gradient, more better methods to use, to apply the elliptic equation. And the time derivative, we use the explicit Euler. We can use, for example, the implicit Euler, which is better and will not be bounded to the CFL condition. And we also want to use a better upwind scheme for the advective term. Also parallel computing because use, applying more real, more reliable situations and models, we're going to have problems with computation and then using things like CUDA, for example, it's, it's something that can accelerate and speed up our, mod, our simulations. <coughs> so as a conclusion, I showed here two uh, mathematical models that describe the blood flow of the, the blood perfusion and, and the CA dynamics. The results, as I showed, matches the phenomenon for the two protocols, the blood enhancement and the first pass. We presented the CA flow from the arterial domain, its exchange to the tissue, and the CA being trapped in the infarcted area in the fibrosis network. But this is all a proof of concept. We can do that. Uh, we believe we are in the right way. We want to do more uh, things in this way to, in order to, to improve the model and in order to provide more reliable tools for the clinicians. Those are the papers that we pub publish related to this work. And yeah, it's important to say some thanks here for the university and the PTB at Berlin, the, the, the Physikalische Technische Bundesanstalt, the CNPQ, FAPMIG and CAPES, and also the computational modeling program, uh, my program in, in the university. Okay, that's it. Like, I am open to any discussions and any suggestions and my email, I'm going to put my email on the description of the video and I'm open to any discussions. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.